Well, here we are again, and welcome to another Connect Spider video. The last time we went out for a ride together, we thought it was going to be the last, and then we thought it was going to be the last, and we thought it was going to be the last. So here we are again. It is... November 8th. November the 8th, and we're back out. It's about... Well, the, the weather thing says it's about 14 degrees, but I kind of believe that it's warmer than that. Um, so... We're going to go for just a, maybe a couple hundred kilometers here this afternoon and um, for those of you that are looking for scenery this may not be the ride. I'm actually trying some different things filming wise this trip and also with the audio so um, I'm trying to use the GoPro camera at the, f the flat setting and I'm also playing around with the position of the microphone inside my helmet and I also want to do some comparisons of the wind noise between the other bike and the new RT which is over there. We'll so. get some nice scenery. Oh I'm sure we will yeah yeah. yeah. I hope we don't get stopped yeah. by the fashion police. Well I, I hope not too yes. Yeah snowmobile boots, tights, Yes. Curling pants. I can hardly get my pants done up. I've got so much on. Yeah, yeah. Snowmobile gloves. But you do what you want to, you have to do to get out on a day like this. That's right, yeah. And the, what usually ends up happening is usually end up being too hot. I'm okay with too hot. I don't like too cold. <laughs> yeah. I'm a winter weenie. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we're going to go put the rest of our gear on and we're going to head out and we're going to go for a little ride up into. Our plan is to go up to the Bracebridge area and then sort of loop around back through Gravenhurst and back on home again. So we won't be out for that long. So thanks again for coming along for a ride with us and I hope you enjoy the video. So Leslie always wears her full motorcycle gear to bring in our recycle bin. That's right. Never know what you're going to encounter. It's a cruel world. Yes. Well, we are underway. So we're traveling up Highway 35 now. We're heading up towards the uh, Kobokonk area, then on up through Minden and to Carnarvon, where we're going to pick up Highway 118, and we're going to head over towards Bracebridge. At least that's our plan, but uh, we were wondering if it would actually be warm enough for the ride we were playing today, and I don't think we're going to have any problems in that department. I'm looking down at the dashboard of the bike here and we're reading 19 degrees Celsius which usually reads a little bit high so it's probably more like 17 or 18 but it is November the 8th. We actually had a, a chunk of uh, time last November where this happened and unfortunately for me I'd already put the bike away for the winter. So we just made the turn onto Deep Bay Road and uh, this is the uh, back road into Minden, we've been up here before, and our Thanksgiving weekend video that we did, we uh, came up this road and we stopped just up the way here for lunch, so it's a, a pretty little section to go on. Trying to get as much of a filming as I can done with the sun behind me because it's so low in the sky right now, it's just about gone one o'clock in the afternoon and uh, the sun is very low this time of year up where I live. As we're running across Highway 118 here, we are north, of course, of where we live and quite far north. We're up near Bracebridge right now and I just looked down at the bike thermometer and we're getting 20 degrees Celsius, November the 8th. 
this is pretty epic for where we live to be up in that temperature range at this time of year. Very pleasant. Well, that was certainly very nice getting out for a ride in November, a rare event up here where we live. As I said in the introduction, one of the things I was trying to do in this video is I decided that I wanted to run the GoPro camera that is on top of my helmet. I wanted to change the color to GoPro flat from GoPro color. The reason I wanted to do this was because I was finding that the clips that were coming into my video editing software, DaVinci Resolve, were coming in quite dark. And I wanted to try the flat color profile to see what that looked like coming into the software. The other thing I'm going to be showing in this video is I've been experimenting basically all during the 2021 riding season with various configurations for the audio um, that I'm capturing in my helmet. And I'm going to show you the journey that I've gone through starting with the early part of the season and where it ended up with. Um, it hasn't been without its problems. So let's jump into DaVinci Resolve and we'll start with the color part. So what you're seeing here is a clip from the intro and I've also included a clip from when we were out on the road and a clip in a kind of a little bit of a darker area of the ride with more trees, although there's not many leaves left on the trees. And the last clip is something that I want to show you, um, which I'll get into in a little bit later. So let's get started off with these clips because these first three clips are filmed in the GoPro flat profile. And what you're seeing now is all three of these clips in what is the um, before color grading. Um, so you can see they look um, a little bit kind of flat looking and a little bit without a lot of detail. And that's sort of what we're after before we go into the, the software for color grading. So if I go back to the first one here, which is from the introduction, and I'm gonna flip over to the color page in DaVinci Resolve. What I want to show you here is um, I have added um, two color corrector nodes um, to this. Um, the first one is just called Auto Color, which I try to use as often as I can um, with DaVinci Resolve. Um, sometimes it does a good job, sometimes it doesn't do a good job. It depends on the situation with the video clip. And the other node, I just added a sharpness node um, just to bring a little bit of sharpness into the image because I felt they were a little bit, a little bit fuzzy. So what I'm going to do now is, again, this is the clip with color grading turned off and I'm going to turn it on now so you can see the difference. So there is a bit of difference. It's subtle, but that's all we really want to try and accomplish with color grading. We don't want to make a, a, a massive uh, change. And you can see if I turn it back off, the improvement in the parade scopes down here. So that's off and on. They're a lot more balanced. So if we go to the next clip, which is the clip of us riding um, out in the open. And there's, there's not a lot of trees, there's not a lot of shade, it's just kind of wide open countryside. So if I turn the color grading off, you can see it's just a little bit lighter. And if I turn the color grading back on, you can see it just deepens the colors and adds a bit of contrast. The last clip is the one riding through kind of a bit of a tree area and I'll just kind of move it up to where we've got some shade right about there. And that's with the color grading off and the color grading on. So we're gonna go back into the edit page and I'm going to now explain what is happening in this last clip here. And I wanna position it right about there. Okay, and I'm gonna go out of DaVinci Resolve now and I wanna show you something here. So we're now um, back on my desktop and we're looking at this clip right out of the camera, 
No color grading has been applied to it and this is what it looks like when, uh, before it goes into DaVinci Resolve. So we're gonna flip back into DaVinci Resolve and I'm gonna turn the color grading off. So you can see what's going on here. It's very, very dark and also this area right here where the shadows are, are the worst, there's actually a fair bit of detail being lost. So I'm trying to have these clips in relatively the same position. So if you look at that versus that, you can see there's quite a difference in the way the clip looks. So what I have to do um, with clips that are in this situation, and I'm gonna flip back into the color page, is I have to do a fair bit of manipulating um, to these images um, in the color uh, management area down here where these wheels are. And I'm gonna turn the, the grade that I did for this on. And you can see it comes back to pretty much the way it was before it came into the editing software. And we picked up a lot of this detail over here. But I have to do a fair bit of work down here to get it to look like that. So that was what really precipitated me trying it in the GoPro flat so that I would get a lighter image brought in and I can do more work with it in post. Now as far as the audio is concerned, um, I'm just going to look at it from the perspective of what I did this season. At the beginning of the season, I switched over to using a GoPro Hero 8 Black camera as my helmet cam and that necessitated me getting a different type of microphone for that camera. So I started off the season with the microphone embedded in this cheek pad area of my helmet and there's a kind of a plastic framework behind there and I just threaded the microphone through there and it was kind of embedded in the this side as opposed to this side of the cheek pad which did kind of have it fairly far away from my mouth and there was a lot of padding in between it and my mouth. So I'm about to let you listen to the first recording I did with this setup um, on a trip I did up to Algonquin Park and I'm going to let you listen to that now. I think we're going to make a stop in Menden to fuel up. I'm not really sure where the next gas station is uh, between there and the top of Highway 35, so better to be safe than sorry. So as you can hear, that didn't work out too well. Um, that was the first ride that I did with this setup, and the lav mic was in the cheek pad as I showed you in the previous section. But you can see down here in the waveform of that clip, all those spikes and that's where all those clicks and pops are coming from. So I did a bit of research and I found out that this is not a new problem with the GoPro Hero 8 Black. So through a bit of research with some other YouTube users and my own research, I found out that I was getting this clipping when I was talking and writing at the same time at higher speeds and that clip was at about 90 kilometers an hour. I found out that if I slowed the bike down to about 80 kilometers an hour and it wasn't a super windy day, I could talk over top of the, the ambient road noise and wind noise without getting all that clipping going on. So I'm going to let you listen to the next clip now, which is over here. And uh, that shows me riding at 80 kilometers an hour and talking and not getting that clicking sound. 80 kilometers an hour with me talking. I do have a fair bit of experience with this uh, setup on the higher speeds. Um, 80 seems to be about the sweet spot where I don't get any interference between the ambient noise and wind noise and my voice. Well, as you can hear, that was a lot better than the first clip. All that crackling noise was gone for the most part, and the audio just sounded a lot cleaner. As I mentioned in the clip, that was done at 80 kilometers an hour. One other method that I tried, as you can see on the screen here, is I tried installing my Rode Wireless Go system and using it as my helmet audio capture source. So I've got the receiver on the media mod and the GoPros inside the media mod. 
And then what I did is I just, with a piece of Velcro, I attached one of the transmitters inside the chin bar of the helmet. I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail on this. I did a full comparison video using this system compared to the lav mic in the cheek pad, and I'll leave a link to that video in the description below. So what you're seeing on the screen right now is the final configuration that I've settled on. This is the lav mic, and I just brought it up out of the cheek pad and put a dead cat on top of it. The dead cat looks like it's taking up a lot of room, but it's actually not. The It doesn't impede the visor or the sun visor coming down, and it just sits in there, and it doesn't really bother me at all, um, although it looks like it, it would be. So this has ended up being where I've settled on having the microphone um, in the helmet. And I'm going to let you listen to a clip here. And although there's still a bit of background wind noise, I feel that this system gives me the most amount of clarity in my voice. And I'll let you listen to that now. now on the same day, late March in, in 2020, I almost said 1920, but 2020. And that was the day that we got our lug and roll trailer de delivered. And uh, there was still... Well, I think that's going to wrap up another Connect Spider video, folks. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you found it informative. Um, I tried to show the experiences that I've had with using this GoPro camera as my helmet cam and some of the experiments I've done with color grading uh, bringing it into DaVinci Resolve, um, the whole journey of trying to get the audio sounding better. So if you enjoy the content in the channel, uh, you might want to consider subscribing and hitting that little bell so you get notified when I release another video. So I'm going to leave you with just a couple of clips from that same ride in November and it seems that the solution to wind noise in your helmet is just to not have any wind noise. The new RT Limited that we purchased back in October has such good wind protection that I'm able to run the bike at 90 or 100 kilometers and talk and not have any crackling noises coming from the camera. So it all seems to boil down to how well protected the microphone and the camera is from wind noise. So here's the last couple of clips and again Thank you very much for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one. An example of the uh, audio performance with the bike running at 100 kilometers an hour exactly 100 kilometers maybe a little bit less than 100